in the series, I take a look at AI audio and video tools for creators to see how they work, how they might be useful in your workflow, and maybe anything that could be improved upon. Let's go ahead and jump on in. First up is Sound Raw. And going to the website, you can see here, it's an AI music generator for creators. Let's start generating. Click Create Music. The first step is to choose the length, the duration of the track. If you click on this, it'll show you different presets for time. So if you're editing social videos, this is great. Or if you need a sting, you can choose 15 seconds or 10 seconds. In this case, I'm just using it as a background track, so I'm gonna choose three. Next, we can choose the tempo. I've selected normal. Now we can go down and we can start generating based off of the mood. So moods are like angry, fearful, epic, like duck. or you can start by genre. So for example, rock house music, electronica, trance, or you can start by theme and you would want to use theme if you have like a particular type of video that you're editing, for example, a comedy video, for broadcast, for drama or documentary. So in this case, I'm actually going to go by genre because I like to use lo-fi hip hop in the background of my tutorial. So let's select lo-fi hip hop. So let's go ahead and have a listen and see which one kind of captures my eye or ear, I should say. All right, not liking that kind of backing there. Let's try another one. Okay, I like that. Let's customize this one and notice how when I hover over each segment here, each segment is about 10 seconds. Each one is given a different energy level that we can customize. So in the beginning, it's low and you can see that it's low based on the waveform. Medium, it's getting bigger. If you want it to go high, you can just click on this and make it go high right away. What's even cooler is that you can actually delete sections here to make it smaller. So you can say, oh, I actually want this to be shorter. So let's delete that. And let's go over here and let's delete that to make our track shorter. And now it's two minutes and 45 seconds. So you can go through and you know adjust the energy levels of your track throughout. Or if you're feeling like a pro, you can go over here and go to pro mode and you can edit other things like the melody, the backing, the bass, and the drums. So let me explain how this works. The melody here in the beginning is off, it's gray. Then the lighter blue means it's on the first level of melody, but you can click this again to make it even higher or turn it off completely. So you can control the energy levels of all of these different stems here as you play back the audio track. Another thing that you can do is let's say that you're like, oh, I really like this, but I wanna see other similar tracks as well. You can go over here and you can select create similar music. And then you can play these similar music tracks. So if you like this track, you can then be like, okay, I wanna share this with my client first to make sure that they approve it for the video. You can actually go over here and share this song before you download it to use it in your end product. So click on share this song. Here, as the client receiving it, I can then customize this. I can choose to delete this section. I can choose to go to pro mode and play around with the instruments. And then I can share this copy it and send it back and say, let's use this version. So this is kind of revolutionizing the way that music can be created for video and it's exciting. But let's get an opinion from an actual musician here. One of my editors, Jiva, he actually is a pop star in Thailand and he has a YouTube channel for his band, I'm Having a Bad Day. You're a musician. You're also a video editor. What are your kind of thoughts from both perspectives, wearing both hats on SoundRaw? I was very surprised at all the features, especially the pro features where you can start arranging and like, oh, turning up intensity and stuff of each part of the song. That was actually way more crazy than I expected. I sometimes want the song to just always be super lit. I don't want downtime because sometimes you throw in a whole three minute song 
and then the song just goes to like I guess a chill part of the song when you just want it to always be banging. <laughs> the only thing I would say that would make Sound Raw go to like the super next level is if they add like a super good search system with like keywords and stuff because right now you can like pick moods. What if you want the genre to be lo-fi hip-hop and cinematic? You can even pick photography for the theme. Where's photography? Oh. It's actually pretty cool to get results from stuff like cinematic lo-fi photography. What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's more like photography videos. If we want the guitar instead. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Kind of even sounds like a whole new part. Like it wasn't trying to copy exactly what that other instrument was playing, which is cool. We both agree that this is more designed for video creators, yeah, right? For sure. Right now, for sure. But as a producer, you could do whatever you want. <laughs> there's a, lot, right. of, there's a lot, lot more options than you can expect from this. <laughs> With the 60%, of course, rule that they have, like, of course, yeah, making exactly. sure that it sounds different. And I'm glad that they put that info inside of there. Yeah, if you download things separately and build stuff off what you download, and, and obviously that's no different from using like a looping site and it should be great. <laughs> it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jiva, for your insight. So the way I see it is that SoundRaw is a utility for us video editors and creators to find a track that matches our mood just by clicking generate, which is amazing, right? And you can go and generate and customize and you don't really need to have much musical experience to do that. But of course, try it out for yourself. I put a link just down below. You can generate as much as you want and try it out in your videos. Thanks so much to SoundRaw for sponsoring today's video. And now let's go on to the next AI tool. All right, so next up we have Treble and Adobe Podcast. Now I've talked about Adobe Podcast before, but I wanted to compare these two tools because they pretty much do the same thing. They can auto transcribe your audio so you can edit your audio as a Word document and you can enhance the sound. So I recorded an audio clip with a fan in the background that we can test. All right, so right now I'm doing a test recording. I have a fan in the background that's going on. Let's go ahead and let's upload it into Treble. And now I'm going to upload for Adobe Podcast. Here inside of Treble, it asks me to choose the language. So I'm going to transcribe it. And then here, I'm going to click transcribe. Now here, it didn't ask me about what language I wanted. But remember that Adobe Podcast is still in beta and it actually is free. Treble is not free, but you get 30 minutes free per month, which is still kind of free. And I actually tested this before and it took about the same time to transcribe on both treble and podcast. So now we have the transcription so we can visually see how to edit this audio file. But the main thing that I'm concerned with here is because I don't really want to edit this transcription here. I really want to check the noise reduction here. So here's what it sounds like without. All right, so right now I'm doing a test recording. I have a fan in the background background that's going on. Now, normally I would not record with a fan in the background because I know that so it sounds better, right? Now let's see what it sounds like in Adobe Podcast with the enhanced speech on. All right, so right now I'm doing a test recording. I have a fan in the background that's going on. Now normally I would not record with a fan in the background because I know that it will add background noise. Adobe Podcast does a better job at removing that background noise, but it kind of changes the way that I sound. But over here, it sounds more natural, right? will add background noise to the clip. But let's say you're in an environment where you can't turn off the AC. You know, Adobe Podcast needs to improve that filter to have a slider to say, okay, I don't want it to be that intense. Otherwise, I think with treble here, Adobe Podcast is gonna get in treble, treble. <laughs> I would say that trebles was more natural than Adobe Podcast. But at the end of the day, I'm a Premiere Pro user. I want to be editing the audio in sync with the video. Now there's already text-based editing that's in the public beta that's coming very soon to the current build of Premiere Pro. And what I would like to see is Adobe adding an enhanced speech feature that's as good as in Adobe Podcast or in Treble. So that way I can do it all inside of Premiere Pro and I don't need to go to an external website to do it. So that's what I'm hoping for. Let me know what you think just down below. So next up is Fader. It's where you can extract all the different stems 
difference from one mixed audio track. So if you have a music track and you want to separate the vocals from the different instruments, you can upload it to Fader to do that. Let's say you're doing a lyric video and you want to transcribe the lyrics so you can create some animated captions for that music video. I recently made a lyric video actually using AI. I did it for Heartbreak Kid. So we can go in here and go to start stemming. I'm going to drag and drop it here to extract the stems because this is the full mix. And I just want to extract those vocals and then we'll be able to download it. Another reason why some people might use this is to remix the music. So if you have all the different stems, you can do some fun remixes. All right, so here I can click on download stems and you can choose which stems you want to download. And in this case, I will download all of them and choose the wave because it's uncompressed and download stems. It also shows you the key, B major. Pretty cool. It's done downloading. Now we can go into Premiere Pro and here is the fully mixed track. It's my time, it's your time, it's your time. And the music in the background can make it hard for transcribing inside of the text panel. So what I'm gonna do is take the stem of just the vocals here that I downloaded from Fader, not the other ones, and drag the vocals onto audio track two. And you can see that it's the same duration. So if I mute this first track, we just hear the vocals. It's my time. It's your time. It's your time. So we have just the lyrics. So now we can transcribe the sequence and we cannot choose the mix, but instead audio track two only and transcribe. So it made it easier for Premiere Pro to transcribe, but of course you still need to go in and make edits because the way people sing is not exactly how you talk. So it's going to make mistakes. So then from here you have your transcript and you can go ahead and make captions. And I actually use this tool called Submachine to automatically animate word by word kind of subtitles. And you can do the same thing for lyrics in this case. And I made a full video on how you can do it by exporting a .srt file and using the Submachine plugin to create those animations for you. All right, so the next one is Autopod. Now I've heard people talking about this. Sarah Dietschy recently made a video about it. Colin and Samir talked about Autopod. And this is great specifically if you have a podcast. So let's go ahead and let's show you how it works by watching the video. Introducing the Autopod multi-camera editor. This Adobe Premiere patent pending plugin edits any multi-camera video automatically for any combination of speakers or cameras. Once you've run the installer, Simply open it in Premiere by navigating to Window and then Extensions. So it's an extension. Obviously you need to pay for it. I think it's $29 per month. To run it, sync all your footage and audio like you normally would on a timeline. If you are using a multi-camera sequence, just duplicate the multi-cam layer one time for each camera. If you want to learn how to make a multi-camera, you can click right up here. Next, input the number of speakers and cameras. Input the names of the speakers for each audio track starting with A1. That's smart. Tag the names of the speakers for each video track, starting with V1. If you have multiple speakers in a shot, be sure to tag all of them. Now, just hit the Create Multicam Edit button and wait for your edit to finish. Once it's done running, you now have a completed multi-camera edit. All right, so notice how it's just cutting the video here and not the audio, and that's because it's not actually removing anything from the podcast itself. It's actually just disabling certain angles. So if somebody's talking, AI is like, oh, let's change the view to look at this guy that's talking or this gal that's talking. It's mainly going based off of the noise of the speakers, and that's kind of how it works. But you still have to go through as an editor and decide, oh, wait a minute, I actually wanna show that other person's reaction. AI can't do that. Another thing that I can think of, it's you still have to go in and make cuts. Like for example, if somebody starts sneezing or somebody had a phone call or something, maybe you wanna cut that out or do a comedic moment. That's something that you still have to do yourself as an editor. But this is very useful because it's inside of Premiere Pro, which is great, especially if you're a Premiere Pro first editor. If you wanna save a certain speaker and camera layout for future use, you can do it here. Again, this will work for essentially any combination of speakers and cameras. Thank you. Overall, I would say, heck yes, this will save you a lot of time, right? As a starting point, but it's not like this is going to replace you as an editor. You can see that there's no cuts made to the audio. You still need to go in and decide what parts you want to remove. Cause a lot of times with podcasts, you don't actually have the full thing. You'll probably cut out different sections, but it's a great starting point to go from. But I've seen kind of these Instagram reels where people are like, oh my God, I'm not going to have a job anymore. And it's like, yes, you are 
like this is just saving you time so that way you can refine it and then do some more stylistic stuff like have some cool split screens have some funny edits add some sound effects all those different things that are still in your control. I don't have a podcast right now, so I don't really need anything like this, but if I ever start a podcast or need to edit a podcast, I'm definitely gonna download this. So I've put a link to all of the different tools that I've reviewed today in this AI review video. I hope that you found it useful. If there's anything else that you would like my take on, leave a comment below and we can do it in the next episode. So again, these tools are not replacing us. They're just making it easier for us to get certain tasks done. And if you're looking for some more AI tools, there is a website. It is called toolify.ai if you wanna check out all the new tools as they come out. So yeah, thanks for sticking around this long. And if you're interested in more AI review videos from me, you can click right over here. Or if you just want some tips on how to edit better in Premiere Pro, you can click right over here. And up here, you can click to check out my new Premiere Gal Toolkit. All right, as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.